And because God is so good, I am going to go into this message, but allow me to share with you some of the blessings that I experienced from the hand of God. This is why I like to praise his name. I get excited about him because he doesn't mind my mistakes. He doesn't, I changed that word. I was about to say he doesn't care. That's not exactly what I mean. But he doesn't mind that I am so full of flaws. You know, when I come before him to worship, he accepts my praise and my worship. He knows I'm trying. He understands my frame. And he sees that I'm weak. It's not an excuse. But I praise his name this morning that he accepts you and he accepts me just the way we are. And he does not condemn. And this morning, I have to share with you what God has done for me. You know, for those of you who don't know, I have worked night shift for a long enough time, okay? And night shift is exhausting. And so, starting last week, God has given me the wonderful privilege of working the day shift. Well, life just comes alive in the daytime, I tell you the truth. The patients I see in bed in the night are not the patients that I see in the daytime. They are exciting people to get along with. Well, you know, a few of them are, you know, otherwise anyway. But, and, and they can be ugly anyway. But for the more majority of them, when daylight comes, they're happy. And this week, I had a privilege of meeting a, an older gentleman. I won't tell you his name, but he has dementia. And so he's got all the forgetful issues going. But when I went into his room, you know, I go into the room, you, I, I, even, even the nurse is different in the morning than in the nighttime. In the nighttime, I, I really am working at this, okay? But in the daytime, I go into the room, I say, Mr. So-and-so, it's morning, it's time to wake up, it's breakfast time. <laughs> and I wake them all up. We're all just one excited bunch. But anyways, when I got in his room, he asked me how I was doing. And I said, well, I was fine. There was a lot of work to do. But I was going to be all right. And he said, ask the Savior. So right away, he just clicked that little song in my mind. Do you know that little song, ask the Savior to help you? I couldn't remember all the words, but I asked him. And the two of us were in there with his wife also. She was there. And we were singing, ask the Savior to help you. He will comfort and keep you. He is willing to to hear you. He will carry you. Listen. And we were just, we were, it was, it was a nice thing. I mean, I am, it's, it's a blessing to be in the presence of these people when they are, when they're awake, because now you can actually talk to them. It's not like when I go in in the night and I can't wake them up and tell them Jesus loves them, but in the morning I can get a word or two in. So I was happy about that this morning and I give God praise. The other thing that happened this week was I went to the doctor, um, on, on Thursday. I had to keep my appointment. When you're growing older, you have to do these things, okay? Amen? Amen. And you have to do them more frequently than you did them before. So I went there, and we had done the lab test before I went to Guyana. I went on vacation. And when I went back, it was first to review the results. And he was just happy. And I'm boasting this morning, but in the Lord, get me right. He was just happy about this result and that. He said the kidney... Panel was fine, the liver panel was okay, the thyroid was okay. And he was on and on and on. He said, what did you do? And, you know, so anyways, we got a little testimony in down there. But when I walked out of his room, I, he said, I, I trade your values for mine. Well, when I walked out of that, of that office that morning, I said, thank you, Jesus. Listen, you have to thank the Lord. I do not have enough fingers, enough toes, enough words in my mouth to give God praise. So I'm taking a few minutes this morning to get it all in because God is good. Then I went with Kate to his school because we needed to get Kate registered. Oh, they didn't get this shot and that shot. Yes, we did them. So we worked at that again. We wasted the whole day out. I mean, the whole day was gone. But finally, when we called Bamsi, we got the results faxed. Yes, everything was done, everything was intact, and Kate was registered for school. It's a tiring week, you all, but God is good. God is good, good to his children. And I am blessed this morning and privileged to share with you how wonderful the God we serve is. So this morning, I've chosen for us to share together under the theme, Who is he? Who is he? Do you know him? Who is he? I like, to, I like to begin, I don't know why, it's just that I like stories, and I like poems, and I like English, 
and I like anything that has to do with English literature. I like those things. So I like to share with you a story. So here you go. You've got to get the story. The flight from Nassau to Miami took Walter Wyatt Jr. only 65 minutes. But on December 5, 1986, he attempted it after thieves looted the navigational equipment in his beach craft. With only a compass and a handheld radio, he went on that flight. Walter flew into the skies, blackened by storm clouds. Does that sound good? <laughs> no. Brother Ed will tell us that. When his compass began to gyrate, Walter concluded he was headed in the wrong direction. He flew his plane below the clouds, hoping to spot something, but soon he was lost. He put out a mayday call, which brought a host, uh, sorry, which brought, brought a Coast Guard Falcon search plane to lead him to an emergency landing strip only six miles. But when Wyatt, as he waited, his right engine coughed its last and died. Fuel tank was dry. Wyatt could do little more than glide the plane into the water. Wyatt survived the crash, but his plane disappeared quickly, leaving him floating on his back with blood on his forehead. Suddenly, Wyatt felt a bump against his body. A shark had found him. Wyatt kicked the intruder and wondered if he could survive the night. He managed to stay afloat for the next 10 hours. Isn't that amazing? God is good. In the morning, Wyatt saw no airplanes, but in the water, a dorsal fin was headed for him. Twisting, he felt the hide of a shark brush against him. In a moment, two more Bull shark sliced through the water toward him. Again, he kicked the sharks, and they veered away. They must not have been very hungry. But he was nearing exhaustion, and he heard the sound of a distant aircraft. When it was within half a mile, he waved his orange vest. The pilot radioed the Cape York, which was 12 minutes. Get moving, Cutter. There's a shark targeting this guy. As the Cape York pulled alongside Wyatt, a Jacob's ladder was dropped over the side. Wyatt climbed wearily out of the water and onto the ship where he fell onto his knees and kissed the deck. Nothing less than an outside inter intervention could have rescued him from sure death. And it takes outside intervention and the Jacob ladder to rescue us. Today, who is he? Let us pray. Father in heaven, this morning we linger in your presence to spend some time with you and to hear you speak. Not on something we don't know, because we have heard this before, but just a reminder that God saves so take control this morning and bless us, we ask, for Christ's sake. Amen. Today, I wish to share with you who he is. But I won't tell you that he is the creator. Yes, the same one that was in the beginning, that was the word, that was with God, that was God, of whom John 1, 3 says, without him nothing was made that was made. He who Psalm 33 verse 9 says, He spoke and it was done. He commanded and it stood fast. And he who Genesis 1, 1 states, In the beginning was the word and the word was, God, was with God. And the word was God. He who Genesis 1, 1 says, In the beginning or at the start or before everything made all things. No, I won't tell you that. He is the creator because you know that. I won't tell you that he is your provider because Philippians 4.19 tells you, and my God will meet all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. I won't tell you he is Jehovah Jireh, the Lord who provides, because you know that. 
No, I won't talk about him being your deliverer. Because in Psalm 18 verse 2, David already reminds you that the Lord is my, is your, is our rock. My fortress and my deliverer, my God, my rock, and my salvation, my stronghold. David already told you that. And my goodness, I won't tell you he is your father. I hope you know that. Because you already pray to him. You pray, my father in heaven, holy is your name. You sing, I know my heavenly father knows. And I am aware that at times we all cry out, Abba, Father, everything is possible. For you. So Father God. Take this cup from me. Don't you. I know you know. So I realize. That you know. Your father. You also know he is truth. You know he is love. You know he is peace. You know he is happiness. You know he is the reason for your kindness. You know he is the reason for your very sustenance. You know the reason you are here this morning. Is because of him. So no. I won't tell you about those things. But if you will turn with me to Isaiah chapter 43, I will tell you who he is. Turn your Bibles to Isaiah chapter 43, and we will read a few verses. Verse 1 through 6. When it is found, say amen. Follow me. But now, thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob. I'll tell you what. So I can hear you participate. Because I I am anxious to hear you. I I have this problem. I like to hear you as much as you are listening. It's all right to listen, but I want to hear you. So I will read the first verse. And you will read the next verse. And then I'll read the third verse. And you will read the fourth. This way I know you're here. But now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by the name, and thou art mine. Verse 2, you. Verse 3 says, For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. I gave Egypt for thy ransom, Ethiopia and Seba for thee. Verse 4, Since thou wast precious in my sight, thou hast been honorable, and I have loved thee. Therefore will I give men for thee and people. Verse 5 says, Fear not, for I am with thee. I will bring thy seed from the east and gather thee from the west. Verse 6, I will say to the Lord, Give up. And to the south, keep not back. Bring my sons from far and my daughters. Verse 7 together. Even everyone that is called by my name, for I have created him for my glory, have formed him, yea, I have made him. Amen? I feel like you are with me this morning. Verse 43 and verse 1. But now. And and as soon as I... I hit that nose. I'm like, now what? But now, thus saith the Lord, O Jacob. Shh. God is speaking. God is speaking. But now, he is connecting a previous event with where we are. We talked about this word before, and and I know we talk about it a lot in church here. But... So something on went, something else went on before and he's connecting that with how we will behave now. So I'm going to take you back to chapter 42 and verse 24 and 25. Those two verses are connected with that first verse. Follow me. Verse 24. Who gave Jacob for a spoil? This is God now. And Israel to the robbers. Did not the Lord? He against whom we have sinned? For they would not walk in his ways, neither were they obedient unto his laws. Therefore, he had poured upon him the fury of his anger, the strength of battle, and it had set him on fire round about. Yet he knew not, and it burned him, yet he laid it not to heart. 
And then verse, verse 1 and 43 kicks in. But now, thus saith the Lord. So, there is a time, like we all know, when Israel does not obey God's command. Uh, no, 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 I take that back. Actually, there are many times when Israel does not obey God's command. And in this particular instance, God at that time is being cited. But here, the next verse after that comes in that gives us all the assurance in the world. And regardless of what you have done, regardless of who you are, how you have misbehaved in the past, God. But now, that was then, this is now. God doesn't concern himself with what you did. He cares about what you are doing. Amen? Amen. So correct what you are doing. You messed up. But now, thus saith the Lord, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel. Now here's my next point that, that, that excites me. This is important because God knows his people by name. So, but now, Anita, amen, amen, but now, Stella, okay, you were whatever you were, but now, my brother, he's calling them out by name. When he calls Jacob and when he calls Israel, it does not mean he's identifying any one people. God knows you individually and he knows us collectively. He knows the whole group of us. And he cares about us. So God cares about his people. And he that formed thee, O Israel. Now we said we weren't going to emphasize the fact so much that he is creator. But just by the way, let me remind you, he created you, he formed you, he knows you, he named you. And he says, fear not. Don't worry about what you did. Yeah, you messed up. Disobeyed me. As the scripture said, we have sinned. But now, he says, fear not. For I have redeemed thee. I have come this morning to tell you, Jesus saves. Who is he? Savior. He loves you. He cares for you. He redeemed. Gives you another chance. As in redeemed, recover ownership. Yes, I created you. I formed you. You are mine. You went away, but I'm recovering you. Amen? I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. I love it. I am God's child, and so are you. You're important to him. Verse 2. When thou passest through, he continues, when thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee, and through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be born, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Here's how I feel about this. I believe that God taps in to those experiences, those positive experiences that we've had in our lives. Those times when he came through for us, And he does that to remind us that he cares. There are times when you're going through a certain experience that you don't seem to know what is going on. And you're tempted to forget. And you're tempted to give up. But just before you do that, remember, it was God yesterday when you were rejoicing. Amen? It was God in the experience that you had yesterday. So I think he taps in there to remind us Like he's reminding the children of Israel here right now that when they go through the water, as when they had gone through the Red Sea, you remember how he parted the Red Sea so they can walk on dry land? He is reminding them. It shall not, he says, overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, walkest through the fire, like in the three Hebrew boys, and it, it didn't touch them, did not burn them, not even the hair on their skin, The same way God is touching these experiences to remind us that he is Savior. I save then, I can save now. He says, thou shalt not be born, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Not only won't you be born, it won't even singe you. You won't be born up, but it won't touch the hair on your skin. For 
I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. Who is he? He is Savior. This morning, I am grateful to God that he is Savior. When I look at the scripture sometimes, I think when we think of God, we think Jehovah. When I say Jehovah Jireh, and I say Lord, the Lord provides, or I say um, Jehovah Shalom, and I say peace, I, I am thinking, you think God, and who is God? God the Father. No, this is Jesus. This is all of them. This is the Godhead. This is how I read this. I am Rose. Last name Rose. Maureen Rose. Pardon me if I use the dead, but Jolly Rose. If we both were working in the same, in the same facility, and somebody wanted me to help, and he had stepped out from in that room, they like to call us by our last name for some, some reason. They'd say, Rose, can you help me start an IV? Okay? And if my husband stepped back in, oh, my husband stepped back in, then they'd still say, and I wasn't there, they'd still say, Rose, can you do this? And so it's still relating to the same two people. We have the same last name. So here you have God, you have Jesus, and you're thinking Jesus was he who walked on earth and who did all these things for us. Jesus was God. Jesus is God. He is in control of all these things. So when you hear, <clears throat> for I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, God the Father, yes. God his Son, yes. Amen. God his Son, creator God, who was in the beginning also. Who is he that we speak of today? He is the Savior. He is the Redeemer. He created you, yes, but he reclaims you now as his own. Amen. Ellen White says, We have nothing to fear for the future, except as we shall forget the way the Lord has led us and his teaching in our past. If we remember the experiences in our lives, when God brought us through, then when we hit difficult times, we remember this is our Savior. This is our Redeemer. It is he who reclaims us. He who sees us as his own. He's named us, like I mentioned before, he says, you are mine. God builds on those experiences, but God saves us also from our sin. There is no sin. No sin that God cannot redeem his children from. No sin that God cannot save you from. It doesn't matter. Here I'm going to list some for you. Because when I listed them, I thought, I have a problem with a few of them, God. Rape. Prostitution. Torture. I'm like, torture? All right. Mass murder. Kidnapping. Adultery. Child molestation. Theft. Devil worship, witchcraft, and God doesn't have hang-ups about them. I'm not saying to you, God doesn't hate this sin, you know. That is not the point this morning. The point is, what you did then, if you fell into any of these categories, God forbid, God doesn't care who you were then. He is willing to give you the chance now. His blood is shed for the remission of sins, and that's for your sins and mine. And Second Peter 3, 9 says, He is not willing that any should perish, but at all should come to repentance. God wants to, stay, to save us. I have to tell you a story this morning. I, I, and, and just take this by the way. I have been working to make sure that these are not long messages, because I, I said, Lord, we can't weary the saints. We cannot. But I have to share this story with you. You know that I went on vacation a few weeks ago. It's always already greater than three weeks, right? Probably four. Three. All right, we'll stay with three. Okay. And when I went to Guyana, my sister, my sister and, um, and her group at, at the church, um, 
they usually go and visit at the prison, right? And and so she wanted to go and pay a, vis- a visit to a young man that was there. And I said, I wanted to go. And today I'm so glad I went because I can share an experience with you on how God saves. This story is about Brother A. I'm going to leave it at that. He's in his early 30s. Black male. A distant cousin of mine. But if you grew up in the Caribbean, everybody is a cousin. There ain't no distant cousins, okay? It's my cousin. <laughs> I, if I start trying to track it, I don't know. It's my my mother's mother <laughs> and his grand, great-grandmother or sisters. We're still cousins. You understand that, right? <laughs> my children have a little more problem getting to know their first cousins. My husband's nieces and nephews. But not so in the, in, in, in the Caribbean. All right. So this young man was involved in a murder a few years ago. And we went to visit him at the prison house. And I don't know what I thought or what I expected. But I walked in there and I found, Brother, Brother Brad would put him up for me soon enough. And I found the nicest creature on God's earth. This guy was so nice. He made me smile with all my, like I don't smile, like all the way up in my, my ears. Because he was just such a pleasant person. So we sat down for him, visited with him. It was his contact visit. That's my mother over there, actually. But it was his contact visit. And so we were, we, we were able to go, you know, to meet with him close up. And um, my sister, because um, I didn't know him, my sister, my sister said, well, well, tell, tell them what happened. And so he started to recount the story about, you know, how this happened. And I don't think he wanted to go into very much details, but he tried to explain. And so he told me that um, his, his wife had been unfaithful um, several times before. And, um, but this, this particular day in question, when, when that was disclosed to him, he was, he was upset. And, um, and they had argued about it. And he said they argued was one thing. The big problem was his mother-in-law came, came into the situation. And, um, and you probably will not be able to relate so much about this, but mother-in-laws live there with, with, uh, you know, with the young people. This, this is common living. Family members, other family members, your mother, my mother, and so on would share um, in, in the home, would be a part of that home. So mother-in-law was right there. So mother-in-law participated in the argument. She got involved, and uh, she must have um, helped in just making the thing escalate. Um, he said his wife, his wife shoved him when he was not paying attention, and he fell, and he hit his head at the back, and, and he passed out. And, but when he got up, when he got up, he was he was an angry person. He was a different person because he just realized it blocked out. He got up and he said, he, they continued with the argument and one thing led to another. And he said, my sister, I, I, I don't make excuses. Today, I won't make excuses. It was my fault. I should have found a way to get myself out of the situation and I did not. And he said, but I lost myself. He said, I don't remember. He said, and, and, and I believe him. He says, I don't remember what happened. I just lost it. He says, I was not myself. I allowed the devil to take control of me. And the next thing we had to jump over all of that was a murder on his hand. And so he is in prison. But in prison, he found Jesus. And this is the biggest part of the story I wanted to tell you. And when I went in there, I thought, I thought if somebody had done something like this, they'd be depressed. They'll be, you know, I mean, you're locked in here. Uh, we asked him, what did you eat? He says, sometimes they cook, you know. This is, this is the Caribbean I'm telling you about now. So I don't know what they, sh- they, they serve in the jail here, but I'm telling you, it's the Caribbean, okay? <laughs> he says, sometimes they, sometimes they serve. <laughs> I don't know. He says, sometimes you eat. If you can eat, you eat. If you can't eat, he says, I just fast. 
So it's a, it's a fast and a frequent fast. Anyways, they sentenced him, and he has um, he was serving 23 years. Um, I think it was broken down to manslaughter. He was serving 23 years because of very, very, very good conduct. He had gotten seven years taken off, and then he had already served four, so he has the remainder of those years to serve. And, I mean, he is just pleasant about it, okay? They, they visit the prison about um, every Sabbath um, to, to carry on a service, okay? They rotate the groups. And on, when the Sabbath, when the, the month has a fifth Sabbath, nobody goes because it's scheduled for four, and he carries on the worship. He does the worship at, 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 at the child house. Brother A is just thankful to God for sparing his life. I'm telling you about someone who is so rich, so learned in the scriptures, you wouldn't believe it. He says, they tried to tell me about Jesus when I was out there and free, and I didn't listen. Now he knows scripture, after scripture. He quotes scriptures, right? He's from Genesis to here to here. He's all over the place. I mean, he's just quoting God's goodness and talking about what a wonderful person Jesus is because Jesus has given him another chance. And he says, you know, the, the best thing about it all, he says, I don't feel guilty, bogged down with guilt anymore because he says, God takes away my sins. The only thing he says I'm sad about is that my family, my brothers, my brothers and my sisters don't come and visit me. They have never come, and they don't come. And he says, that makes me feel a little sad at heart. I said, but remember, the Lord has given you other brothers and sisters and family, mothers and fathers. You have a large extended family out there that you don't know of yet until you get out. But he is just praying and thanking God, and it's, it's just such a wonderful blessing. This young man is, I believe, will go places. God doesn't care about what you did yesterday. Not that it doesn't matter. It does. And it will always impact your life. Remember, the consequences of that will follow you along. But the beautiful thing is that God has given you a chance. And if you can grasp hold of that thought, that what I did, who I was, does not matter anymore, because Jesus Christ makes the difference, then your life will be a blessing not only to yourself, but to others that are around you. And this morning, I ask you to pray for Brother A. I believe by God's grace. I think he's going to come out earlier than than his next, what, 10 or 13, whatever years he has left. I really do. Because because he's going to be up for parole, and I think he's going to make it. It doesn't matter what they tell him to do. He does it. And I'm not saying, he says, whatever they say, as long as it is okay with God's word, I, I, I do it. But little things that they, you know, they just direct and they just instruct. Take that off. Put that there. Whatever. Not a word. Not a word. He just does exactly what they say. And he's so respectful. He calls them proper by their names. Respects them. They all like him. All of them. I am saying that he says, I feel, his testimony is, I feel a little bit, a little bit like Paul. Not quite. Just a little, in the sense that God has had to bring me to a situation to get my attention. And when he's got my attention, he says, I feel so joyful, so happy that God is good. And this morning, my brothers and my sister, I tell you, God is the Savior. Jesus Christ is our Savior. And he can save you from whatever experiences you find yourself in in life and bring you in more positive ones. He can save you from yourself. He can save you from your sins. He can save you from people. He can save you from circumstances and situations. Whatever you find yourself up against, it is Christ who makes the difference. If you forget anything this morning, do not forget your Savior is Jesus Christ, who formed you, who named you, who calls you his own. Who, Jeremiah says, numbers the hair on your head, knows your smile, knows your name, care about your family. And as if he wasn't done, he told us that he cares about our loved ones. Verse 5 and 6 in in Isaiah 43, 5 and 6 says, Fear not, for I am with thee. I will bring thy seed from the east and gather them from the west. I will say to the north, give up, and to the south, keep not back. 
Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth. He will gather his own from wherever they are. And to me, that says our children. Our children who we pray for, who we don't know where they are at times. God says, your sons. He says, my sons from afar and my daughters. His children. They're his children. But I like to think of them that our children... He will call them from wherever they are. That his children who he has out there who doesn't yet know him, he will find them where he are, where, where they ever they are. Because Jesus is able to reach down in all of whatever mur, whatever, whatever rut we find ourselves and he's able to lift us up. He is savior. So who is he this morning? He is savior. He is the only one who can save you from your sins. And from yourself. And this morning, we ought to be more than grateful. We are conquerors through Jesus Christ. What I have been in the past, I am not today because of Jesus Christ. It's my situations in life I have been saved from by the Savior, Jesus Christ. I have been redeemed by the Savior. Given a second chance. Chosen. Renewed. By Jesus Christ. And I pray for all of us this morning that we will take a hold of the Savior and allow him to do that renewal work in us. That we will be ready to go home with him when he comes. God bless you. Remember, he is your Savior.